mountain archery, they had this big bowl contest going in there. So I went in there and I was getting my, my broadheads, which I was shooting shuttle tees, 100 grain. And uh, and the guys at the counter was like, man, you need to put in for this big bowl contest. It's, it's only $10. I mean, I was like, nah, yeah, I don't shoot big bowls. You know, I just like to go out there and hear them bugle and, you know, and, and, and hunt the elk. And it, whatever is the best shot that is presented, you know, if it's a big bowl or a little bowl, it's probably going to get shot if it's just everything's perfect. And I said, I don't think so. So I milled around the store a little bit longer, uh, gathered up some uh, Easy Breeze puff powder and a few other items. And one more time, the, the gentleman with the counter, he's like, yeah, you ought to put this in. I mean, it's only $10. And, you know, what do you got to lose if you if you win and you get a, you know, a trophy of a lifetime? And, and I said, okay. And I filled it out and $10, handed it, paid for my shell tees and... Uh, come to find out that this was the biggest bowl shot that season, which was 2009. Um, public land fair chase with bow, and I got this beautiful critter mounted for for 10 bucks and a, and a memory to last, last a lifetime. I get up in there, and he's getting closer and closer, and, he, and I finally feel like I've got his attention. I, he beagles and I cow talk, and he just roared right back at me, and I'm just I'm ready. I, I get all geared, set my backpack down, get my bow out, and oh, I get out and I, I stand up there and I get in position and we're right on the ridge and it drops off like this and that bowl's coming up and, and I'm standing up in the, the opening with my bow like this and, and he's just screaming mad. And the first thing I see is a cow and the wind's jo dropping right, right down past me off my left shoulder. I can just kind of feel it just brushing my nose heading to the south, just downhill. And this cow comes up the ridge, and she, when she shows up, she's oh, 20, 20 yards away, so she's close. And she's going to travel just up past me up the wind, and I know that bull is just behind her. I can't see him yet, but I can hear him bugling. And I was like, this is going to be perfect, so I'm ready. And she comes up, and instead of traveling and keep going over the ridge, she turns and walks directly towards me. Now, when I'm in right toward me, she's facing me, and I, I don't have a mask on or nothing. I just have my camel and my camel hat, and, and so as she comes closer, I just kind of start dropping my hat really slow so she can't see my eyeballs, and I just keep dropping my hat really slow, <laughs> and, and pretty soon I keep following her body, and here she comes, and pretty soon I see her feet right here, and she's right next to me. She's still walking, and I hear the 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 bull just screaming, but I can't see him. I lift up my eyes, and I, I can't see him. I was like, ah, oh, she's going to blow it, man. She's going to take one more step and win me. And she comes right, right next to me, where I could just see kind of her middle middle of her body and her, and her rump right next to me. I mean, if I, if I do this, I hit her. So she's right there, and I remember staring, just staring at the ground, just enough so I could see forward. And I hear, I hear a couple times right during this, this heated up moment is I can hear breathing in my ear so she hadn't been just staring at me but I did, I didn't move I just sat there and I could just hear her breathing right here in my ear and I'm just sitting there and I'm sitting there. I can't see the ball and I know one more step you know that wind's gonna catch her nose and it's over and then finally here comes the bowl I see I see this I see this coming up <laughs> coming up over the ridge and that's all I see and I just I said man he's a shooter and I, and I got ready and when he comes up the hill he does the same thing he's facing me and he's coming right behind that cow and, and he's coming closer and there's, I'm right in the open and he's in the open and he's 20 yards and one more step here it's all over and I he closes in within 20 yards and I know it's time and he drops his head right behind a, 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 a fir tree and I draw back <laughs> and the cow just blows up she just you know how you just picture she just sidesteps and goes running off crashing like the whole forest was unleashing and i i'm full drop and the bull he looks up and sees all this commotion in his eyes i, I still picture the whites in his eyes just flaring out like a wily horse you know and you spook a horse they just get like that that's what this elf did and he knew he was in trouble and he was facing me and i'm full draw and he went to spin in the exact same uh, path that he was coming. And as he spun, he was such a big critter, and his body so long, as when he spun, I just stuck right behind that shoulder, and it, and we, it sunk it. It sunk it, and I was just like, oh, did that 
this happen? Did I get him? I get him, and he and he takes and I grab my cow towel. Actually, it's still in my mouth. I read, and I I just give him meow, and I give him that that cow talk, and, and he stops and he turns around and looks at me, and I'm just like, that's a good hit, that's a good hit, and then I see his feet come up over his head, right there. Not not more than ten human steps did he take from where I hit him, and the and the feet were up. He was down. I mean, after I saw that bull tip over, I I called my wife and. I, I had my cell phone. <laughs> it's a bad thing to have when you're hunting, but it's a good thing. I call her and I and I uh, and I tell her what happened, and she she just can't believe it. And I and then and I and I when I opened my phone, there was like five text messages, and they all said, you know, these are all my good friends, my wife, and they said, happy birthday, you know, good luck hunting, stick one for me. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So I had I had to call my buddies and tell them what happened, and I. I took a picture of my phone and sent it to them, and, and uh, about an hour later, all my buddies had quit work, and they, they were up helping me pack off this monster. And uh, yeah, what a life, life experience, life story. Uh, thank goodness for good friends coming to help me get him out, because we, we shoulder packed him out. Um, no frame packs, no nothing. We, uh, we deboned and hauled out drumsticks is what we did.